Hello there and welcome to week two of building the bongo. Now we also just hit 1k so at some point through the week there would have been a room tour so if you are new here definitely check that out it's the first room tour on this channel and thank you also for all the support from my last video. It's only been up a few hours as of recording this and it's doing pretty well so it's safe to say I think I will be continuing this series throughout May as well as doing a few more builds like this later this year. Anyway Today, there won't be much done on the bongo because I have been out all day collecting some free May 4th goodies and I'm sure you've already seen that video, but I will be talking about the order I placed last night. Right at the end of week one's video, I did leave you on a cliffhanger about placing an order and I have now made that order. In fact, I made it last night after editing the video and I can show you what I got. So it might not look like too much for this order, and there are a few parts for the next build that I've ordered in advance. But the main part of this order are the windscreen pieces down at the bottom. I've actually ordered four just in case one arrives and it's not in great condition. Something's happened in delivery or even if I just want to use these for a future mock, they were only like 20p. So that is a great price to pay for giant transparent pieces because I don't have many cockpit pieces. Perhaps I'll even use them for another model ship. And the seller also had this windscreen here which is actually the windscreen from zam wessels speeder now for as long as i've been building mocks i've wanted to build zam speeder and the speeder that anakin and kenobi kidnap i don't know where they get that speeder from i think kenobi just goes and borrows someone's speeder unless it's the speeder they use to get to padme's apartment but this is the cockpit of zam wessels speeder and i think it's going to make it much much easier to build zam wessels speeder if I have the official Lego cockpit. Speaking of official Lego cockpits, the cockpits that I've got for the bongo are the same ones that Lego have used. I'm not quite sure which bongo they used it for. I think it was their first bongo, but it's the same cockpit that they've used before in a bongo. It just makes sense to use. It takes up the exact same space as the Mandalorian Razor Crest cockpit. And the only difference is rather than it bulging out and taking up quite a bit of space, it's a lot more flatter like in the actual bongo. Rather than going for a bubbly look, it's more like if you were to stretch a bubble across that space. So these cockpits are definitely going to look better. I mean, worst case scenario, I just buy a few of these in a week anyway, but that will be arriving later this week. I've allocated Friday to talking about this order when it arrives and trying to make use of the pieces. If it doesn't arrive by then, it will just be in a later video, but hopefully it's here by Friday and there are a few other pieces such as these slopes and there's actually some slopes and cones which I basically brought out from this store because I think they're going to be vital to building up the scenery around the bongo and I do have something in mind later on that they'll be very very helpful for and then I also have 43 of these blue cones. Now what I'm thinking with the blue cones is rather than having bar elements for the tails because the tails do curve quite a bit and they're sort of like these tentacles coming out of the back of the ship so if I can connect a load of these cone elements I think I'll only need about 15 of these to match the 24 or so bricks that span the length of the flexible bit of the towel I just don't know what I'm going to have running between them so I might be making another brick link brick out lego order at some point this is my first order on brick out hopefully all goes well because I really would like the cockpit pieces to arrive and it's the same as Bricklink, it's all covered by PayPal, so if you are thinking of making an order, you can get your money back if it all goes wrong. But there are also some droid parts and some hair pieces. Now these are for my Separatist and Republic armies. Some of my clones I would like to display the faces of, especially with that new Rex that is coming out, which first off, I cannot wait to get Rex in a cheap Y-Wing microfighter. That is very, very nice of Lego. Pauldron, arm printing, literally the only thing that people have to complain about is the karma. There is no karma, but you might know I'm already making my own. So hopefully by the time Rex comes out, I'll have a karma ready for him for June. But I have a few hair pieces for Cody. And actually this hair piece here is for Lando. Because right now I only have two custom Landos. I would love for Lego to come out with a Lando fig that isn't his Bespin uniform or the Skiff Guard from Return of the Jedi. But I think this hairpiece looks better than Finn's hairpiece from The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, which is what I'm currently using because that is the most accessible hairpiece I own. So I'm going to whack these hairpieces on Lando. 
and then take Lando's hair pieces for a few of my clones. And there's some clones like Commander Fox that we just don't see the face of in Clone Wars. I don't remember seeing Fox's face. But for Cody, for Wilco, I think this hair piece up here will be good. So I've ordered two of them, one for each of Cody and Wilco. And hopefully I can get a hair piece ready for Rex. As for the droid torsos, I have a bunch of spare droid pieces and it only makes sense to order these if they were available. They come out to a couple of pence and really they're just to build my droid army in the long term. So hopefully the next order I'll get a few more droid parts because my droid army is lacking a bit compared to the Republic. Lego, we need a droid set and we need it right away because I didn't pick up the droid gift with purchase. Perhaps that would have helped give me another six odd droids but even then we need a plain droid battle pack and not one that gives us a bunch more clones because that also means we can get a bunch more droids in the set but hopefully you see where this mock is going with the cones the slopes to build up these sandy banks of the underwater cliff that they're literally brushing alongside of and if you've got any ideas for the towel how i can connect these cone pieces i've seen a few of the longer bars there were none in this stop in particular and it was one of two stores that had these transparent cockpit pieces. And in fact, they had one more than I needed, so I might as well pick them all up. So let me know down in the comments below, and hopefully tomorrow we can continue working on the bongo. And now we know what cockpit pieces we are going with, it means that we can start to build up the rest of the area and get ready for these parts to arrive. Hello there, so it's finally day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe I told you I'm gonna lose count of this. I think it's day seven and we will be filling in the Naboo Bongo. Now, yesterday you saw the order and the pieces that I'll be getting. It's mainly just the cockpits for the actual Bongo, but they're the same size as the Razor Crest. So when I'm building each of the three areas for the bubbles, I can use the Razor Crest to size up the space that I need to leave. It's a bit of a different angle and I will hopefully have these sloped rather than flat like the Razor Crest is. But that gives me a rough idea of how much space I'll need to leave for them. And we'll just be building it up, building up to the back. I'm not quite sure if we'll start on the engine. I feel like the engine needs its own day. So I'll probably start building up a frame for this today. Tomorrow we'll see where we're at. Perhaps I can start working on how I'm going to stand it on the mock. And then we'll probably dedicate a full day to the engine Tuesday. So I'll continue updating you through the day with what I get done. Hopefully there'll be an update after each of the bubbles, but that is if I'm doing the three bubbles today. So I hope you enjoy today's update. Also, do you prefer the style of video where I just pick up the camera and record? I will admit this video from here on out should be a lot better focus wise than the rest. I've played around with a few settings and it doesn't seem to be flickering, but I'll leave a poll over in the community tab. Let me know if you prefer this vlog style of content just for the intros or if you prefer my more professional camera setup on the desk and standing with this amazing background. I'm a big fan of that display. So I've just had dinner and as you can see, I have got quite a bit of work done on the bongo today. I have smoothed off this corner, rounded off the back and actually started to look at the bubbles. As I said, I am using the Razor Crest cockpit piece to try and map out where the windshields will be going. And though it isn't as long as the new bubble windshields that I've ordered, it's only seven bricks long compared to the eight. Because it will be at that angle, I'm sure that extra brick won't really make up that much space and we'll just overlap this bit here. So that's the reason I'm still using it for this front middle one. And then when we take a look at the back, it's sort of the same reasoning. It won't be as sloped as the middle center one, but at the same point, it's still got quite a bit of space out front if it does need the extra room and I can always push it one further back. Speaking of the bubbles, you can see that I've hollowed out these back two and there is now much more space inside to just put all the random junk that you see on it on screen. And there's a few giant orange spiky things and we've also got some crates. So I'll be able to fill that once they've arrived because I do want to check that they will fit. I think these back ones will be a bit lower and then this front one will be nice and sloped coming off of the arch that I will now be working on tonight for the back bit here. I'm not sure how much I'll get done. I'm just gonna play around with slopes, try and slope up the side and make it all look cohesive and 
all look like it's part of the bongo, not like it's sticking out, like with these bits, even though I've used some random parts and there are some gaps, it does look quite good together and it still looks quite flush overall. So hopefully we can do that with the rest of the bongo. I've also added and changed around a bit in this middle one. You can see there are some control panels. I didn't give Jar Jar any controls in my last video. He could barely stand up on his own. So I think he's just gonna have the visor that shows him what's around. If there are any bigger fish approaching the vessel and Kenobi's the one with the controls on the left. The chairs as well, I have changed. I've swapped out the actual Lego chair pieces because now I'm not quite sure that the minifigures will be able to fit in this gap. So at least with this, we'll fit Jar Jar and they'll be able to lay back a bit. I can modify it at a later date if I have to. There are two studs either side of Qui-Gon's chair just so I can fit some crates and other bits in the cockpit to busy it up a little bit. And again, same on the right side. I've just left the gap for more bricks. And I think it's coming together very nicely again. Let's do a check, make sure it can hold itself up. It's still very sturdy. So tomorrow, dependent on how much slopage I get done, I will be trying to make it flow on the bigger display. Build some spires underwater to try and hold this thing up at a very nice angle. And then we can start work on the towel at the back. So let's take a look at what I get done later on. And for the final update of today, first off, I would like to talk a bit more about these holes. I don't know if I really spoke about it or just said they were there in the last update. What I've done is removed those panels just at the back there and made sure I've got some more room at the back to pack it out with a few other bricks and pieces because I felt like there just weren't enough room, especially with how low these cockpit pieces are gonna go. I would have got like a plate, maybe two plate tops, so I have given myself a bit more room in those areas and just hollowed it through to the underneath plate. You can see that is what you are seeing through the top here. It just has one of them Technic bricks in the way, but it shouldn't really affect the building too much. I have mocked up. This is a mock. This is definitely not final. You can see I've just piled a bunch of slopes there, but I have roughly shaped how this is going to look. And honestly, I think it looks quite good. There's a lot of studs and a lot of misjointed slopes and just, it's not very neat, is it? But I do like the way this is looking overall, especially at the back, which gives me enough room to pile the Technic bricks I was talking about to get the back a bit more solid than it currently is, especially when I put the towel on it. I still don't know exactly how I'm going to connect the towel. I might just end up using an axle rather than a pin, but if a pin seems stable enough, I'll probably just end up using that. But I've also included some clips for the cockpit pieces. You can see there are clips on top and the sides. There's not really much we can do to the shape until the cockpit pieces arrive. So this is just gonna be rough, but I now know how many Technic bricks and what I can pile in there. So in a few days time, I will have filled that with Technic bricks and hopefully started work on the towel because if anything, this arch here is the only final bit that I've added on, but honestly, I really do like the way it's shaping up. I couldn't have gone too high here over the cockpit, but I wanted this to be roughly the actual height of the bubble windshield piece that I'm getting so that it flows up into this round arch at the back. And I'm very happy with where it is at. Stability test, and you can see even with the slopes not all pushed in properly, and Perhaps some could be better. It's still not falling apart and holding together, which is amazing because it means that chances are I won't have to change the frame. There's gonna be a few more bricks packed into the back, but that's gonna be where hopefully most of the weight is. So that's where we'll be stacking it tomorrow. As I said, tomorrow we will be, well, you'll see it in a minute, but we will be trying to stand this on the display. It'll be hard to balance it without the towel, but we've got a good idea of where that weight is going to be coming from. So hopefully tomorrow we can get a bit of the scene done. I'm not planning on finishing the scene in one day. I'm probably gonna do a bit every day actually for the next week or so, but hopefully you're enjoying this video so far and can see where the bongo is starting to form into its final shape. Day eight is here and I've actually just finished filming my room tour. So once again, thank you all for helping me hit a thousand subs. And now we're gonna be working on the base of the model rather than the bongo itself. 
I will dedicate tomorrow to building the tower. I think I've already said that a few times in this video. So we can put the bongo to the side and start looking at what terrain we want to shape. And for the base, I am still thinking of keeping this rather flat just so that we don't overwork the bottom of this mock and there is some sort of distancing between all of the little details and then building up the back of it using a few slopes. I don't think I'll build it up as far as I thought initially, but just have it so that there's some little wall and then it just goes straight back rather than angling it away because I feel like that would look a bit better and then we can have some more detailing on top of that. And as far as the middle goes, I'm going to have quite a big tower just so we can eventually support the bongo on it and then just a few little spires and most of this is going to actually be using some slopes and cones and different pieces that make it look like all the coral and that you would expect to find underwater because whilst it just looks like rock on Naboo, Naboo is filled with life and considering there's only Otagunga and Feed as far as cities that we've seen there, the life is definitely under water and in the forests and everywhere else that we've seen, such as through Clone Wars. We saw a bunch of different wildlife and I definitely want to represent that with the base of this mock. And whilst I'm working on this base, I have actually got an email to say that the brick out order has been sent as it is scheduled to arrive Wednesday or Thursday. So that's very nice. It gives me enough time to check it over and make sure the pieces are all okay and the order is well before recording the video on Friday. So hopefully the order does arrive in time and everything goes well and I'll be able to show you in a few days where they go on the bongo. And it's also very helpful because them cones and slopes are going to be a big help when making this base. So perhaps I'll just use a few different colours for now and I can replace them later on. So as you may know if you are a subscriber of the channel, Today has been very, very busy. Not only did I record my room tour, which I mean, I must have spent about an hour recording, but also we just got a bunch of new leaks. Well, they're not new leaks, but Lego released a trailer for a show coming out later this year, and it may have just confirmed a few of the leaks we've got previously. So I've been on and off this base throughout the entire day. And as you can see, I have used a bunch of slopes, cones, different wedge pieces to try and create this rough terrain that I want to start around here. I'm very happy with this. I just want a big spire coming up in this middle bit that they would have had to angle the bongo to have dodged. Speaking of, the bongo itself is standing up on basically just a two by two tower of bricks. But I really do want to show you how I've got this on because if I don't take it all off, there we go. It's actually holding on to two hinge bricks which I have connected with one by fours. This is legal, it's not putting any stress on the brick that I'm aware of, but how I've built this, if I can pop it off and try not to break it too much, is I've just indented the hinge at the top using these two jumper plates and that has matched it up perfectly. It was actually quite surprising. I've added these on here because initially when I connected this straight to the ship, I'd pull it off and these hinges would get stuck on the ship. So I've done that to fix it. Let me replace this one by two here. And this here is a solid structure. The reason I have built this as a two by two is because I might as well just keep this apart. It's got a nice core in the middle, two by two, which allows me to whack some Technic in there to add some bars for support or even just put a few more bricks on the inside, something big like one of them pieces I'm using to hold up my tight interceptor and then this does go on I've included a black plate on the bottom which will be there for the next few days I suppose because I don't know exactly where this is going to clip on this was so much easier when I didn't have the camera rolling I don't know why that happens but it is always the case I thought I knocked over a piece but I guess oh no I did I can see it now so I've just put this, we'll, we'll put this, let's say there. And I've just put a bunch of pieces around, not so randomly because I found a lot of them were sticking to the same pattern. Like these two slopes here, I might want to change now that I've noticed them. But I'm very happy with how this bongo is looking and how it looks on display. Just picture the towel coming out there with all them blue cone pieces, Ben and 
shaped in every which way. And then we've got the cockpits that will be on the top as well, covering it. It's just going to look amazing. So I'm happy with the edge of this. I do need to fill it in and carry this on back, but I'm waiting for a bunch of my slopes, which will be the main things that will fill in the gaps between each of the sea lifes. But as I said, I haven't done a lot today, but I think it's vital work because now we can start on the underside of the bongo. No, we're not starting the underside. Now we can start on the tower of the bongo, start building that out. And I'm only going to build the six brick sort of engine core on the back here. But now we can actually build it, make sure it turns and make sure it turns without knocking the whole ship over. And then I might have to readjust where I've got this pillar because it's going to have a lot more weight at the back. So the center point of mass is going to slowly shift a little back. And then, of course, it will probably shift forward when we continue plating the underside. And then it'll go back a bit more once we've done the cones. So this is all going to change quite a bit. I don't think I'm going to do too much in the center here for that very reason. I might start putting a few bricks on the outside there and start building up that little ledge that I want but I'm very happy with today's very minimal progress and now on to the towel. Hello there and it is day eight. I am a bit behind on the editing so I can't quite remember what I said I was going to do today but I do know that initially I was planning to do the underside of the bongo here and if I can take it off without damaging anything you can see the undersides just plated. We've got this black tile here, so, well, black plate, so that I know where I am standing it when I put it on the display. But I don't really think this has to be any nicer. I mean, it's going to be displayed like this. You're not going to see the underside, and I'd rather start putting some effort into the towel. So I'm going to scrap the plan for the underside. I might try and slope it off a little bit and get a little bit more detail in there, make it look at least somewhat more presentable. But I think the big emphasis today is going to be on getting that engine done. Of course, we can't do the towel fully yet because we don't have the cones that will be coming in an order anytime now, really. I think they were expected from tomorrow to Thursday. So hopefully they arrive before my Friday deadline. Honestly, I'm pretty sure they're going to arrive at some point. So if they aren't here by Friday, I'm going to check in and... Hopefully all goes well, but I still don't know how I'm going to attach the cones as the little fins of the tail. So definitely let me know down in the comments below, unless I have a sudden major breakthrough over the next few days. But today we're making the engine. That will probably be all because I've also got a load of Bad Batch builds for today's video. And then hopefully we can see it get a bit more of the shape we're used to seeing because right now, it just looks like some filled in bow and arrow. It is really looking cool to be fair. I cannot wait to get the cockpit and the main part of this build will be done by the end of the week. So again, I'll update you when I'm done with the engine unless I run into any difficulties and hopefully today we can get the entire engine done. So it has been a very busy day recording the Bad Batch video, but it was well worth it. I'm very happy to see how far the series come and some of my builds that I've built. So definitely check out the video to see all of the box arts I create for the sets I've built using your comments. But it is now 11 o'clock. In fact, it's just gone 11.01 on the 7th, which is the ninth day of filming. And I've started work on the engine. As I said, the underside I think looks good enough as it is. It is just a bunch of gray plates and you can see a sneak peek at the engine there but you're not going to see it so i'd rather work on the stuff that is visible which does bring me to a good point now that i've done the engine and i think that piece just goes there it's looking a lot more gray than i would like it to i definitely would like a bit more blue perhaps because it's underwater the background makes it look bluer than it is but you can see on the engine there is that's the back of the ship and then it dips a little bit. There was another image from a dictionary of sorts, but you can't really see it because of how small it is. So unless I were to zoom it in, what it does is it dips down to this gray area of the engine. And that is what I've represented here using this giant Technic wheel. And I think this does look great. It's also allowed me to connect the towel into the bongo on just one pin. We have one triple, well, 
is it, is it double one side, single one side? I'm going to call it a triple pin here. Technically, it's one and a half pins, I guess, because a pin is double sided anyway. But we've got one of these blue triple pins, which goes in there. And I've put a stopper to stop it going too far. And then that connects into the back bit here. And you can see I have stacked up all the Technic bricks. I really need to get this sorted because all these loose panels and loose slopes are pinging off. But I don't want to fix anything down until I think these were this way. I don't want to fix anything down until the cockpits have arrived, because if we need to change this, this is so easy to just pop parts off and rearrange. And I definitely want to get a few more blue slopes or some sort of blue pattern around the front. I might even add a blue one by four just to get that blue connected around the front. But I want a bit more blue around this area. The towel, there wasn't much I could do. I might have a look to see if I have any of these slopes in blue. And I've tried to slope it off around the back because pretty much everyone I've seen build a mock of this has used the slopes around the side. And we don't want to be like everyone else here. We want to be different. I've tried to include the yellow lights which you can see just on the back of the towel they are sort of glowy this is the closest i have i think i had four of these in trans yellow so i could always order them but i like this yellow more because it pops with the blue and looks really cool this goes in the center technic hole there and i could have some bars running down the side they would fit in the wheel just to strengthen this if i need to I am a bit worried of what the towel will do to this pin, but this is very, very light. I mean, it's half a wheel and half just a bunch of slopes and one by one round bricks. So we'll have to see how heavy this is when I attach the cones. Again, I still don't know what I'm gonna do with the cones. Hopefully by the end of the week, I have a few different things that I can show you and I guess we'll decide from there. But this goes right into the Technic brick at the back. There you go. Not much of a problem. It does mean that the Gungan sub can now rotate and it can now angle where it's going well. Technically, it can propel itself forward. We still need the actual propellers on the back, but it's starting to look like the image. In fact, it's the wrong way around. But if you can imagine it the other way around, it's starting to look like the image. We just need the towels out the back and a few more blue bricks and plates. But as I said, I haven't got much done today and I don't think I got much done yesterday. It's definitely past my bedtime, so I'm going to sleep on it, see if I improve it tomorrow, and I can't remember what we are doing tomorrow, but hopefully at some point the order arrives, because it is meant to be arriving at earliest tomorrow, and then we can put the cockpits on and stop worrying about all the slopes at the back. So, sorry the last few days haven't been as exciting as the first week. This may push it back or this may mean that the next video is jam-packed of a lot of different trial error and many different builds. But thank you all for the support. And if you're watching this video, definitely drop a like to show me how far you're getting into it and subscribe for more awesome content. And so you don't miss out on the other updates. But chances are, if you're watching this much of the video, you're probably already subscribed. So thank you for subscribing and I hope you enjoy it, the next update. So I think today might be the first day where I don't do too much to the bongo. It's looking really, really cool on the display. And I might add a few more. I might see how many slopes and cones that I've got to add to the bottom. I'm not quite sure I've got enough slopes to cover the whole thing. So I'm going to have to find some way of just adding that bit of greebling and adding a few more colors in there, like a little reef or something along the side as well. Because though it's dark in the Phantom Menace, I would like this mock to pop with a bit more colour, but today my main objective is actually to break down all my Bad Batch models. Not all of them. I did want to keep Batcher and I might even keep the Dagger Vessel because that does look pretty, pretty cool. But most of these mocks are now going to be pieced out and put in the parts drawers behind me, which is probably going to take me all day. But I also noticed that I used a CMF for my Wolfie Custom minifigure. And when I was about to put him back, I noticed most of my CMFs don't actually have their accessories with them. So I've done my first two series just there. And I'm also probably going to be doing that throughout the day because there are a bunch of unique accessories. I know exactly where they are, but I haven't put them with them. And looking at the last four series, it definitely improves how they look. I mean, you can tell that the top four are definitely 
complete and it just makes them look a bit better than just a bunch of minifigures standing there. So as well as breaking down the Bad Batch sets and also starting on my Tales of the Empire mocks because I really did enjoy that show and I've got something great planned for that including a bunch more custom minifigures so I might have to clear some room on the shelf. I'm definitely looking at getting another one of these. I just need to size up if I could fit most of my Star Wars minifigures in there. So I might play around with the cone and bar connections for the Tau, which are just going to stick out here onto the minifigures. I think they come out to about here, so they're definitely going to be nice and long. And I'll probably give that a go later. I realised that I've got one of the long bars from Moss Eisley, so I can play around with that in a few different coloured cones. And hopefully that does look pretty good. The only problem is I'm pretty sure Moss Eisley only came with one of them. So I might have to either order another bar. It might even be too long, but I'll definitely take a look at what it looks like. And that will determine if I need to order more bars. But as I said, that is the only thing for today. So let's take a look and see if I manage to do anything. I really need to fix my sleeping schedule, but look how cool that Millennium Falcon looks. And Lego have actually used popcorn to represent asteroids in this wallpaper but today as I was working on the towel I first sized up how big the engine was which it does come to eight bricks rather than the six that I'd planned for so that meant with the whole towel measuring 30 bricks which is something crazy like nine meters I can't remember exactly but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around that nine meter mark. And earlier I did mention using the UCS, well, Master Builder Series MBS Cantina Bar. This thing is massive. I completely forget how big that set was because I've broken mine down into a diorama and that is, well, it's gotta be over double what I need for this. But then I remembered how much Lego likes to release Luke's land speeder every few years and I have a ton of these so I grabbed a handful of them I've also got a few of these cone elements I didn't quite use all the colors I had planned for but I did create three different patterns that you can vote for the design we use because adding two cones onto the end of this makes it the 22 studs that we need the bars themselves are 20 long but the cones stick out enough to be the 22 length that we'll need. Let me try and clean up a few of these extra bar pieces so that you can see a bit more clearly. So together, these would attach onto the engines here. And because they're bars, they can be positioned, folded, and basically just twist around each other. I think that is going to be the easiest thing. So the three designs that I will have are laid out in front of you initially. This was the one that I was going for. So we got a bit of blue, which is where the cones are. All of these cones are going to be blue eventually when my order does arrive. And this, I think, is still my favourite out of the bunch. I really do like this one, actually. So this end would attach to the bongo. And then this would be spiralling off. But I just don't think it looks like the actual bongo. I think this represents the thick and thin parts of each of the towels quite nicely. And when that's in blue, blue and grey, it's going to not break it up like these other green ones do where they have sudden jolts of a sharp change in thickness. So personally, I like the grey ones, but this is all completely down to use the viewers at home. So vote for it to make sure that your favourite makes it in the next video that I'll be working on next week, because of course I've got to wait for this video to go out and see what you all think. But I'm happy I got enough bars. I should have enough cones when the order arrives. Fingers crossed the order does arrive tomorrow and I might talk about it a little early, but then we'll look we'll look at what exactly arrived in the order on Friday and hopefully add some of the parts to the bongo. Of course, we can't do much with the towel, but I definitely want to get the cockpits on and start to finish up the actual ship because then we've got to work on the base. So this is all I've done today, vote for your favourite and which one you want to see on the towel. I'm very happy with how it's coming along and as I said, hopefully the order arrives tomorrow. Hello there, so I have had a shave and I've edited the last few days of the video. It doesn't feel like we've done a lot, but I think we've actually done quite a bit. We've got the coastline of the actual scene done, which is quite a big step in doing the rest of the scene. And we've also got the whole engine on the bongo, which means 
we just need to add the towels, the cockpits, and slope it down a bit nicer. And the actual bongo is pretty much done. Now we have a lot of work to do on the scene, but I'm gonna wait and hopefully the parcel should be arriving today if it is on time. So hopefully today we can do the cockpits and I can show you the order early. And then tomorrow we'll get work on the rest of the scene. So I'll let you know if the order does arrive, but if not, eventually I'll just start sloping up the rest of the base plate. So it's literally right after I've recorded that, I went downstairs, thought I saw something on the doorstep, and the parcel had been sitting there for like three hours. Royal Mount just left it by the door, walked off, no knock, no ring. We literally have a ring doorbell, and it's not exactly in a hidden spot. You look straight on as you're walking up to the door. I don't know how they can miss it, but that does mean we have the parcel, so let's take a look at what's inside. And this could be a bit awkward to open one-handed, but as you can see, there's a nice little note thanking me for my order, and I did order this from SPH Bricks, and they are a store much like most of them on Bricklink and Brick Owl. They're the two biggest second-hand Lego sellers so it makes sense to use both platforms. So check them out if you do want to purchase, well, none of these cockpit pieces because I have bought them out. It's quite nicely packaged. There seems to be one bigger bag and then there's a few little bags inside. So I'm gonna get these open and go through them one by one. And at face value, everything seems to be there. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. And you can see this is the Zam Wessel cockpit in here. I'll probably take this out and put it straight away because it's hard to see through the bag, but this looks in pretty great condition. It was used and in decent condition on the site, so I expect a few scratches and a few bits of wear and tear, especially if it's been on display or played with. And we've also got all of the 1x2 slopes and some of the droid bodies in there, which I probably do have some arms and legs that can go straight on them. I don't know if I've got any more droid heads, though. We also have all of the blue cones that will be used for the towel. So let me know down in the comments if you don't want to go over to the community tab, which one you think I should do. We'll name them A, B and C for the sake of simplicity and let me know which one you prefer. But alongside that, we have a few of these sandy cones which will be used for the scenery. Some more droid arms and hairs for my clones, but I'm not quite sure if I'll feature them in this video. And then the start of the order and the reason why I ordered from SPH Bricks is these cockpit pieces. So let's see how they go straight on the bongo. And as you can see, I was right not to stick down all these cones and make it fun, all the slopes even, because the cockpits don't all quite match up. The one over there doesn't clip down because the clips are one too low. So I will have to adjust that. Besides that, it's pretty much perfect. I could probably slope off the back a bit better. All I have to do is swap these two pieces around and that will be looking pretty much finished and then we can start working on the interior. The middle one doesn't actually angle itself any further down, which is fine because I'm just gonna change what clip pieces we use up at the top. But it does look like it's going to work very well if I can hold this up and put it in. That's what the middle bubble is going to look like. So I could probably even get away with sloping the interior of that off a bit more and then doing the same at the top. And then over on the right hand side, I built this front bit completely different. You can see we've got a one by four and then it goes down to a two by four because you have this little platform in the front of each of the bubbles. And yeah, I just haven't done that over here. So that is an error I will need to fix and I'll just need to increase the height of these back clips so that it holds the cockpits down. That's what I'm gonna be doing today, I guess. I'm gonna be doing this and push the scene back to tomorrow. And then hopefully we can get a few more bits done before I wrap up this week's update because I think it's almost been a week already. It's gonna be a bit more than a week, but the last video was a little under a week. So it only makes sense swapping out these connections for each of them and just building it up around and then we can place down these slopes where they need to go. Because as you can see, we probably need to add a shallower slope at the bottom and perhaps even put this a little bit indented. Perhaps even just one plate down will do nicely and then fix up what's going on at the top. So I'll let you know once I've done all that, but that is the plan for today. So I've now updated the left side of the bongo and look how clean that is looking. I'm very proud with how this has come along and also, for anyone that was curious, I would like to show off this windscreen piece for Zam Wessel Speeder. 
because, okay, it might not have just come from the factory, I'm not sure how many of the uh, little, not scratches, but little marks on it that the camera is picking up, but that printing is pretty much perfect, there's really no complaints, so that is really amazing, and I was going to build this later this year, but I think I'll probably save a speed of chase for next year for the anniversary of Attack of the Clones, and also... Hopefully this channel will be a bit bigger so I can afford some of the parts. I've really enjoyed doing that for the bongo, buying these cockpits with all the money that my instructions make off Rebrickable. So be sure to head over and purchase some instructions to support the channel. And to everyone that already has, thank you so, so much. It's because of you videos like this are possible. I'm very happy I picked this up early. I will now have to put this somewhere very, very safe, which isn't the back of my desk. That will have to be sorted after the video but I'm really liking how the bongo's looking, mainly because I've sloped off the top now, rather than using the, well, I've used the rounded slopes rather than the actual slopes. And there's a few other little, I guess, greebling techniques that I've included here. This one is definitely my favorite. As you can see, I've got one of these frying pan studs, as me and my partner call them. They're the stud with a bar attached to them. And then I've got a clip on that so I can angle that just in and a slope on top because otherwise, we end up with this really big gap on it. So I'm very happy that it's definitely closed up. And just at the bottom, you can see by reflection, hello there. But I've got another frying pan stud that has just closed up the gap at the bottom and looks a lot better than that rounded one. So I will be mimicking this on the other side and I can actually access, oh, this is where I'm on video and can't open the thing. But you can access the cockpit here. You'll just have to take my word for it. My hands are very slippery and oily at the minute but you can access this by putting your now in the bottom of the cockpit here and lifting it up and i'll be filling these with the giant orange shapes and all the different things you see either in the episode or also they're a lot clearer in the visual dictionaries i like how the rest of the ship is snug to the rounded part of the cockpit so all i've done is got some two by two wedges the one by two cutout bit on the side and then Done the same at the back, one stud in. It's given me a little platform at the front and there is a Technic brick going through it. I don't think I'm gonna break this apart just to move that out of the way because it's gonna cause more problems than it would normally. I think it's easier to open it from the side here. There you go, that's what I was doing. I was opening it from the side and then I've got all this space in the back for some other accessories. And I've got the exact same the other side. I haven't updated it. I will say, I definitely prefer how I've done this on the left hand side. You can see it doesn't quite meet up and it doesn't flow as well as you'd like. Whereas if we take a look on this side, it just looks so, so much better. So I'm very happy with how this is coming along tomorrow. We will be working on the base as I've done this. I'll give you one update tonight to see both sides of this sloped off and I'm very happy with how the Bongo project is coming along. And two weeks in, we have nearly finished the Bongo already. You can see, it's looking very sleek with the mostly told off top. I didn't want to completely told off. I really don't like when Lego models are completely no studs showing. So I've left a few at the back here and some around the front. And this is it on the display stand. I think this is going to look really cool once we've built up more of the scene. It's on there nice and solid, thankfully. And I've even got this mock towel that I've built. You can see the bars allow me to spread them out and maybe even twist them a bit like the image. I finally flipped this image so you can see it with a comparison of the mock. Hopefully I can get as little glare on that as possible, but I think it's coming along real nicely. We've even got the green lights on the side here. The only thing I had to really drop was the patterns on the cockpit. So there was a line coming up here and separating two little bits there. And there was also a little V on the front here. I could have definitely got stickers on there, I think it's just going to make it look tacky and I don't want to ruin the mock with a few stickers. So I'm trying to keep this as stickerless as I can. That also means there isn't a fin up the top because when we're opening this middle cockpit, it would block the fin or we'd have to end the fin there and it would just be an abrupt ending to it. So I'm very happy with how it's coming along. Even the back does look pretty cool and you can access all three of these cockpits. Now my hands are a lot drier. It's a lot easier to open them and that's where we're going to be filling the minifigures. That's a much later date. I might do that next week, but that might make its own video and also get all the storage bits in there, which we now will be doing in place of the order. Because I think initially I was going to talk about the order on Friday 
check that everything come out and if I didn't receive something then go and get it from a newer Lego set and then add it Saturday. I've managed to do it all today and it is only Thursday so I'm looking forward to see what else we can get done this week and I'm really excited to see the finished model but of course that won't come for another two weeks. We've still got a lot of the base to do and all the other sea creatures it'd be really cool if I do get to build a bigger fish but it'll be something like that. That was the inspiration for this mock that image there I'll put a clearer one on screen and we could have a smaller version of that fish down here just stalking the bongo as it's swimming along or perhaps that can be over here because I did say this is going to be the deep dark of the water so that might look really cool there but that is everything for today I don't really know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow now because I had sort of hoped that I didn't get this done today, but I guess I'll have a sit down tonight, see what else needs to be done, and chances are we'll start work on the base. Hello there. So I completely forgot that I was wearing that. Today, there's not going to be a massive update to the bongo because I actually want to start getting work on some scenes from Towers of the Empire, which will be the videos over the weekend. But there's not really much more to do with a bongo. The biggest thing is the base and the life around it. Now, we do have two weeks left before I want to be making this showcase, just so I can pack as much detail into this mock as I can. So chances are the next week will be about the base. And then we've also got to size up the minifigures. So the bongo isn't quite done yet. I'm not sure if we can fit the minifigures in. I'm not going to try it now. That will be a video for a later date. But today, all I'm going to do is make the underside of the bongo look a little bit prettier, make sure it also slopes up as it goes towards the back of the ship and just get it looking somewhat smoother like you'd expect some sort of submarine to be. So that's all I'm going to do today and then I've got a few other projects to work on. So it's a short update for today but I've just finished editing yesterday's video and it's already 45 minutes so I think you might benefit from the last update being a little quicker but I hope you're enjoying this series don't forget to go over to the community tab to vote what sort of content you like more because I'm really enjoying this just picking up my camera and talking about what I am building of course this doesn't work for every video and also don't forget to leave your comment on which towel you do prefer a b and c go back in the video I'll probably leave at the end of this clip an image with all of them labeled just so you're aware which ones are which and I'm looking forward to see which towel you pick. So as I said there really wasn't much to do today the bongo is pretty much finished it's looking very very sleek and I'm happy with all the space we've got for the insides I guess we could have started on the insides but next week we're gonna go to the terrain and Mini figures really shouldn't be too much of a task fitting the figures in here. So I guess when we give Qui-Gon some crates to sit between, we'll also fill this up. So that'll be in a week or so. As for the underside, there really wasn't much I could do. I tried around with replicating this sort of design and having two strips on the bottom. It really just didn't look as good. And I think that's just because we haven't seen the underside. So all I ended up doing was giving it a little foot at the back because I noticed when I was working on the front and when I had the thing down on my desk, it was pushing on the towel and putting a lot of pressure on the pin that holds it and allows me to spin it round, which I think is a really cool feature. So I've given it a step and it matches the roundness of the rest of the model and just makes it all look quite good. It'd be nice if we got the underside of these slopes so I could really match it up. We do have a piece similar to that but then it comes out a further plate and they just wouldn't work together but I've gone with three of these two by two slopes and then some rounded off slopes just to better round off the bottom of it and of course we've got the black four by four which helps me know where this bongo is being put on. It is very sturdy still as you saw I can lift this with one hand, give it a little wiggle, and really most of these pieces aren't going anywhere. So I hope you enjoyed this update. I will put a comparison of where we started, in fact that should be the other way around, of where we started and where we are now. So hopefully you can see the progress we've made. It's come quite some distance in the last week, and I'm very happy with the little, even the greebling, it just breaks up from regular slopes, and Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like for the second week because 
Well, I'm going to be continuing anyway, but it definitely helps out the channel. And subscribe if you're new here. Thank you so much for watching this very, very long video. I'm so happy with how the channel's growing recently, and hopefully it never stops. But of course, may the bricks be with you, always.